You know, if there's one thing that I love doing, it's finding a movie, show, or just about any piece of media that I can dive into completely blind. To just not know a damn thing about what I'm about to watch, leaving me surprised no matter whether the content I've just consumed is good, bad, or something completely different from what I used to believe entertainment was. And that is probably how I would describe The Night Is Short Walk On Girl, which is a movie that even after finishing, I, I can't fully digest as quickly as I've digested just about anything else. This movie feels just like, like a fever dream. It it feels like a fever dream. It feels like I just took a handful of Walter White's baby blue and shoved it down my nostrils, then proceeded to go on about whatever boring events I was previously doing, which is making internet videos about Japanese cartoons. But in all seriousness, despite the fact that I still have no idea what I had even just watched, I will say that for a fact, I absolutely adore this film. It's not my favorite movie ever or anything like that, but there are certain animated films out there that no matter matter what lies within it, the style of both how it tells its story and how it visualizes its content reminds you just why animation is such a beautiful medium and why we as people love it so much. Movies that feel no shame in being labeled as animated or cartoons and take full advantage of the fact that it doesn't have the limitations set on it that live action movies do. That's exactly how I would describe this film right here because of just how bizarre it is. Like you could very much call this movie Otome's Bizarre Adventure. I, I can't believe I just fucking said that. Now, the reason why I keep calling this movie bizarre and the reason why this wacky and yet incredibly messy adventure works lies in both its extremely fast-paced story and its amazing visuals. Now, I have not read the original novel that this is based on, but I do plan on it and because of my lack of culture, I'll be judging this movie on its own and not as an adaptation. The narration style and dialogue in this film most most definitely feel straight out of a book as the two main characters are continuously narrating their journey along the way and visualizing the world around them through their descriptions of events. Like if a character says the world is starting to melt around them then that will literally happen on screen as if it's real when it actually isn't. The story of this movie or at least the synopsis of it is actually very simple and straightforward. It follows two nameless main characters. The main girl is simply walking on throughout an extremely eventful night in Kyoto making a bunch of different friends and subtly affecting their lives in different ways. With the main recurring item being alcohol. Yeah, there is more alcohol being taken in by this girl than your dad when he gets home from a long day of work and decided his family didn't get enough of his wrath the night before. <sighs> Alright, so back to the movie, that's her plot, and the main nameless guy's plot is that he is chasing this girl, figuratively and literally, to try and get her to fall in love with him. But he keeps being set back by random events that keep him from meeting her, and so that makes his night a living hell. And that sounds relatively simple, yes, but this simple plot is turned straight onto its head and then repeatedly bashed into the pavement of the street until there's so much brain damage that you can no longer perceive time or your own vision correctly. The creative team behind this movie and the mind behind the original novel take what is a fairly easy to understand idea and then feed that idea a bucket full of shrooms. You go from meeting a bunch of new people to drink with, to suddenly having to save an old pervert man from a pornography debt, to meeting a literal god of books to wearing a giant apple in a very illegal stage play that gets hijacked by the end of it, to then literally having an inside out press conference that turns into World War Z inside the main character's head. Like you don't get any time to actually understand what the hell is happening and instead you go from one plot point to the next at the snap of your fingers. And while that sounds overwhelming, and, and trust me it is, that is part of the appeal of the story, if not the main appeal. The film definitely does not hold your hand in any way when it's speaking about its themes, as one of the main themes of the central female character is that she walks forward endlessly to the point no one can keep up with her, and so the movie goes by incredibly fast when focused on her side of the story. The scenes centered around the male character are the best possible examples of the breathing space of the movie, even though those also go by very fast because it's just a naturally fast paced story. The theme of fate is common in anime romance and in rom-coms, especially the red string of fate and that theme is present within this movie but the way it tackles said theme is where it separates itself from other movies. As these two characters clearly believe in fate but they're going about their own fates in all the wrong ways. 
leading to a conclusion that has them finally understanding just what they actually need to do to go about their lives. Another central theme tackled is how every character is interconnected with one another in some way, whether it be big or small. This is evident through the book god and his little monologue, but also another main piece of evidence for this is how everyone gets a cold at one point in the movie, because one character got it, which was then passed on to them by another, which continuously got passed on to another character throughout the entire night. But you can also see this just in the story with just how the characters meet. Character A will meet character B, who then later meets character C, who is trying to meet character A, but ended up running into character B, who previously met character A. Yeah, once again, way too complicated, but that's the whole point. Everything in this movie doesn't exactly make the most sense. Like, none of this would happen in real life, but everything circles back to itself by the end and creates a very well-rounded story. It's very aware of how insanely bizarre and messy it is because it continues to up this crazy factor the longer the movie continues. It's all over the place and yet all those places are tied together by a very thin string. There are many other themes tackled, such as learning how to deal with your own insecurities, which is presented through the male lead, and gaining a new perspective from other people, which is presented through the female lead. The visuals of this movie take the presentation of the story to a whole new level. Once again, I, I have not seen the Tatami Galaxy as I'm currently reading the book first before I watch it, but it's the same art style seen within that show as they were made by the same people. The character designs and movements are just about as exaggerated as they can possibly be, as seen from the Sofa's dance and as I said prior in this video, the character narrations are visualized within the film as well. There's a specific scene where a very pessimistic old man has a drinking contest with the female lead, and whenever he's taking the screen it becomes this very dark and gloomy space, yet when it switches to the female lead it's a very bright and warm space with flowers coming out of the alcohol to represent her love for the drink. And this isn't the most revolutionary device of visual storytelling, it's actually fairly common, but it is present throughout the entire movie and doesn't take a break from it. Specifically in the climax of the film it takes everything up from a thousand to a million and gives this interesting perspective scene to explore the male lead's insecurities and overwhelming thoughts as the female lead makes her way through a town in a literal storm of loneliness just to make it to where he is and save him. Which is, which was just so damn cool to watch, like it was really cool. At first you can't really fathom what you're looking at, but by the time it needs to, it starts clicking and immediately becomes one of the coolest scenes and best examples of visual storytelling that you'll see in an animated product. The style of this movie has that really colorful type of look that mostly relies on giving a ton of different colors to characters rather than shading them, which really benefits the way they're animated. Of course there's the Tatami Galaxy, but another comparison I could make to this style is Sunny Boy because of the limited palette and hard color style that they share. As a whole, I think The Night is Short Walk On Girl is a very solid movie and while it's not my favorite thing I've ever seen, I have nothing but the utmost respect for the film and the people behind it. And it has a very respectable place to be kept within the discussion of great anime movies and just great movies in general. So is it good? Absolutely. Will I watch it again? Definitely, as I think this is a film that can resonate even more with multiple watches because it immerses you and pulls you in without giving you all the details straight to the counter. There's a lot you can miss while still enjoying it that beg you to give it another watch to appreciate it even more. And so yeah, I do recommend that you watch this movie because I think that depending on what you like, this movie could serve a lot of personal relevance to you. And I do want to make a more in-depth analysis of the film, but that'll wait for after I rewatch it and look more into the production of the movie, which is another video for another day. So until then, that's been this review. Like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel for more anime, manga, and movie content, and comment down below what you would like to see me cover next. I do have a reading and watch list that I'm always adding to, so I would love any suggestions. That's been this video. I'll see y'all next time. Bye-bye.